Hi, I'm Wendy Roschke. I work at IBM on a product called WebSphere Application Server. Um, I'm going to talk about stuff that has already been covered by more dynamic and interesting experienced speakers <laughs> than me. Um, being productive and um, getting your real meaningful work done when DevOps is so interruption driven, so interruption prone, at least it is for me the most interruption prone job I've ever had. Um, so let's take a huge step back and examine what makes work satisfying. So for me, uh, whenever I've accomplished meaningful results uh, that result in my entire organization being productive um, and that are valued and recognized by my peers and management, that really fills you know, me with peace whenever I log off at night. Um, intrinsically enjoyable for its own sake, um, and it really requires that I go into that meditative, beautiful, zen flow state where you're in deep concentration in the zone. Um, but interruptions are the antithesis of that, the bane of that you know, beautiful flow state that we all need for such a complex thing as programming, debugging. Um, and I'm sure everyone in this room knows, will agree, that context switching is hugely unproductive. It doesn't work, and it, you know, it's stressful. It induces a lot of negative emotions, at least for me. I've often felt like punching through the walls <laughs> like the Incredible Hulk. And there's that oft-cited um, study by UC Irvine that the average office worker takes 25 minutes to return to the original task before the interruption took place. So what are the common types of interruptions in DevOps? So the big time black hole for me, for my organization, is the crisis management, the firefighting. You know, the bills are red, the bills are broken, everybody's blocked, our product is blocked from going out the door, from going to the customer. Um, you know, the network outages, server outages, those sorts of things. Uh, wow. Um, the next one is helping that one guy down the hall with his requests for his operations problems, help, helping with his bill breaks or what have you. Um, he's a pain in the ass, but you love him. He's adorable at the same time. Oh, and the request for enhancements that that same guy is always making um, to make his job easier on the tool or process or whatever that you built and you own and it's not going to make your life easier, right? Uh, so how do, we, how do we cope with those sorts of disruptions with, um, you know, those interruptions? Um, how do we get that real meaningful work done while keeping ourselves sane and also keeping our developers, the people we support, happy? So I know my team, we've really had to invest in strengthening our builds, our tools, our infrastructure, so that we experience less crises and less requests for help. Um, and we're starting to see the dividends of those investments. And really, this is a big one. I've had to train myself to expect the unexpected, to not get so freaked out by interruptions, um, and to just, you know, take it as it comes. And I've really had to buckle down and schedule dedicated flow time in the day that ideally coincides with the rest of the organization. Sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't, but it's a worth a shot. Uh, and I always want to walk that fine line between, you know, feeling, being approachable so that the developers feel comfortable in approaching me for requests, you know, for help or feedback. But sometimes I just have to say no um, and that I have to accept I can't always be the hero that steps in to save the day and, you know, somebody else has to be it or, you know, it's just going to have to wait. Um, and here's a big one, a cultural, cultural shift. Um, everyone in the org needs to get on the same page, um, should understand that, you know, we should all contribute to minimizing interruptions and pointless time-sucking activities and everyone deserves the respect and the productive environment they need to get their meaningful work done. Thanks.